I hate to bring down the mood, but according to some of the smartest people in the world, robots are going to destroy us all. With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. If I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. The development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. I don't like computers. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really hate them. So, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't want them to be any more part of my life than they are already. Eminent physicist Kira Knightley there on the set... <laughs> ..on the set of her latest theorem. So, when smart people are scared, I need another smart person to calm me down. Please welcome to the weekly theoretical physicist, Lawrence Krauss. <laughs> So, is Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and yes, Kira Knightley are scared. Yes, yes. Why are you not scared? Uh, and I'm not scared of anything that Kira Knightley is scared of. You know, I think that's basically. <laughs> is, that, is that just to be contrary? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. The point is that first of all, we're a long way off from worrying about. It. We talk about artificial intelligence as if it's around the corner, but uh, it's recently it was shown that you can't get a robot who can fold laundry. If you can't fold laundry, how are you going to rule the world? <laughs> <laughs> Surely we can find someone cheaper than a robot yeah, to fold yeah, laundry. Exactly. I think we can. I think we do, actually. But, I, but sure, it's not just about folding laundry, though. At no, some point, AI is about giving up control to machines. But we've already given up control to machines. That's the point. And it generally makes our life better. The first kind of computer was actually an elevator, if you think about it. And you give up control when you go in that elevator and press that button. You're not... You, yeah, you're I, you say that, but we don't just give control to elevators. We select a floor. Like, we don't we just walk in and go, wherever you, wherever you want to take me, but Otis. You don't know that... <laughs> well, you actually know you are, right? You select... You push a button, but how do you know it's going to take you to that floor? You trust... Now, you're sounding paranoid. Well, no, you trust... <laughs> the, the point is, you, you give control, but you willingly do it, because it helps you, because you don't want to walk up the stairs. We obviously use computers, we use phones. Now, they have changed our lives for better or for worse, but ultimately, uh, artificial intelligence has been designed to help us. And the other thing about it, when you see movies, you know, Terminator and all that, we assume that the robots are always emotionless, uh, uncaring. But if you actually really... And I, by the way, do think artificial intelligence will one day be conscious. I, I, I think there's no obstacle to ultimately becoming conscious. My Mac will do that a lot before a PC, but... But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but uh, when that happens, they'll be learning and they'll be experiencing the environment, and if they have, literally, self-awareness, it's not clear to me they won't have empathy and all those other things. So I, I guess I'm not worried. In fact, as a physicist, I want to see how they do physics. I mean, I'm really serious about that. How would an artificial intelligence do physics? They'd probably be able to do quantum mechanics much better than us because, in fact, they'd be using it. So, but isn't there... Doesn't that fly in the face of something we like to believe about human beings, that there is some kind of magic about this thing in our skulls that has made things like quantum physics happen? Well, we like to believe a lot of things, but that doesn't mean they're true. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, the brain is a computer. Now, there's something really different about it, and this is another reason I'm not that worried. If you took a computer right now, a digital computer, and tried to have the storage and processing capacity of the human brain, it would require about 10 terawatts of power. That's about the same amount of power as all of humanity uses. Your brain, you, your brain, uses about 10 watts, okay? Thank you very so much. There's, <laughs> <laughs> so there's clearly a factor of... A carbon offset, though, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so there's clearly a factor of a million, million difference between the way our brains work and, and modern digital computers. So there's something different about the way our brains work. And we're a long way off from getting there, but we are computers, and that's it. And we, we imagine there's more to it, but as far as we can see, there isn't. And so um, uh, why we might even... I suspect the future intelligence on the planet in the long run will have a silicon base, not a carbon base. Wow. Well, because it, this just became an episode of T Star Trek. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because you, you will, will, will eventually... Biology is limited by biology, right? And so computers, if they can, if they're self-aware and self-programmable, one we would expect would be able to evolve much, much faster. And any biological life form would want to join that at some point, you'd think. So as we move ahead, though, it feels like facts are losing ground in the world. Do, do you feel like facts have to do a better job of selling themselves? Well, they always have. The, the difference between the modern world and, the, and, say, the world when I was growing up was when I was growing up, there were, like, three major TV stations and you got your news from one of a few different people in the States. I'm sure it was the same here in Australia. Now there's the Internet. But the problem is, in the Internet, there's no filter at all. So you have access to an incredible amount of information, but you have access to an incredible amount of garbage. And what we really need to teach children is how to tell the garbage 
the nonsense from the sense. And I think that's really important because you've got you've to be your own filter now to tell information in the modern world because you have access to everything. And that unfortunately means that nonsense can gain traction very fast as, as happens on blogs and, and, and throughout the world. So why do, why do bad facts seem to do better than good ones? They're often more scandalous, I think. People like scandal and people like, like uh, something that has notoriety, I think. And also the fact that, frankly, people want to believe. We want to believe crazy things because we're hardwired to want to believe there's reasons for why we're here. We want to believe that there's aliens coming to visit us. We want to believe lots of things. And one of the things that science tells us is you should be suspicious of the things you want to believe in. You should be prepared to be wrong. You once said, though, that to teach creationism was a form of child abuse. It that's is, it's a, that's a fairly brutal way of putting it. Yeah, yeah and I, exactly, but it got some attention because if I hadn't, you wouldn't have uh, read the line. But, but, uh, <laughs> I wish my gags got that kind of attention. <laughs> no, but it's true. I mean, it's, they're very, they're different levels of child abuse, but it's like not allowing your children to have medicine, not allowing your children to be vaccinated, for example, is child abuse, because you're doing them harm. In some sense, if you withhold information from your children because you'd rather them not know what reality is really like for fear that it's going to then affect their beliefs, then you're doing them harm. Okay, I've got to ask you something before you go. I have to ask you this. If, if we know that the universe started with the Big Bang, mm -hmm. which started with something smaller than a speck of a dot... Yeah, smaller than an atom, in fact, yeah. What made that? <laughs> <laughs> Why did it have to be made by anything? Well, someone just left it on the bench? <laughs> like, well, that doesn't make sense. No, no, it's, no it, well, you know what? What science has taught us is that things that make sense to us may not be right. The universe doesn't care what makes sense to you. That's what's wonderful about the universe. In fact, it causes us to open our eyes and change what we think is sensible. In fact, as I argued in my last book, it's given the laws of quantum mechanics, it can spontaneously pop into existence from nothing with no reason, no cause, and it's quite likely how it happened. I don't know if that's reassuring, but it is a beautiful way to end this conversation. Lawrence Krauss, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lawrence Krauss!